That was who just told you the Buffalo Bills with the 27th pick. They had 10, and obviously KC moves up to get the quarterback that they wanted. Buffalo with the 27th gets LSU cornerback Tredavious White. And joining us to react to the Buffalo Bills last night and what to expect today in rounds two and three is Joe Biscaglia, who is the sideline reporter for the Buffalo Bills working for WKBW in Buffalo. And Joe joins us here on Big Board Sports. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. How did you uh, grade out Buffalo's night in, in the opening round? Start there. Well, yeah, I, I think th- you have to open up with the trade and exactly what they did there. I mean, uh, if you look at their roster and, and everything that, that they probably needed to add um, it, heading into 2017 with a brand-new head coach in Sean McDermott, uh, I think they – were always of the belief that trading down would have been the the optimal way to go. They just needed the right deal, and and they needed someone to be willing to move up all that way, or or even just a little of the way to give them another pick. I mean, uh, before heading in, they they only had or heading into last week even they only had six picks. They got an additional seventh after uh, the Mike Gillis lead of the Patriots thing, and now they added an, an additional third rounder and a first rounder in 2018. That deal was just too good to pass up. And, uh, you know, now they'll be always linked to the future of Patrick Mahomes and whether or not he, he ends up panning out for Kansas City. But in the interim, it's a, it's a, it was a good trade for them because they, they got a lot of value out of it, out of it and, and move all the way down to 27 and, and get someone in Tredavious White who is a fit for what Sean McDermott likes to do with his cornerbacks. You know, right now on the roster they had – some uh, a, a couple of corners that are starting for them in Ronald Darby and Kevon Seymour, who are more of the old mold of uh, of what Rex Ryan was looking for in corners. You know, a little bit shorter, quicker, uh, shorter arms, better in man coverage. Tredavious White is uh, long limbed. He's got over 32 inch arms. Uh, you know, he's about six feet tall, and and um, and you know, he's got really good instincts in in zone coverage, explosive moving towards the ball can can break things up. So um, I think they went in and they they got in their mind a starter out of twenty seventh overall and now they have three picks to uh play with tonight in day two of the draft. Yeah, I, I, I think it was a good move because this was a draft where there were a lot of good defensive backs and this is one of them in Tredavious White and you get him at the twenty seventh pick in round number one. Is he? You, you, you kind of hit on it, but Joe is. Do the, will they expect him to come in and be an impact player, start right away, make a big contribution? I think it, just based on McDermott's scheme, uh, I think that would be the expectation because in his zone scheme, uh, the one thing he has always kind of gravitated toward are these long armed cornerbacks. I mean, you can go right down the list, even in Carolina last year when they drafted cornerbacks in the second and third round in James Bradbury and Daryl Worley, they both uh, were of the same profile, long-armed, and, and both ended up uh, playing a substantial role for them uh, last season. So I think Tredavious White, as long as it, he just doesn't completely flop in, in the spring and the summer, uh, I think he walks in and is one of those outside cornerbacks and moves either Darby or Seymour inside to a, a nickel role, which is probably better suited for someone of their uh, of their height, weight, and, and arm length uh, stature. Joe Chris Sonorado here with Roger as well, and and you can speak to this better than than we could. But going into last night, you know the needs uh, of the Buffalo Bills were obviously in the defensive backfield, so they fill one spot there. Linebacker was one that a lot of people were saying maybe wide receiver with the future of Sammy Watkins unknown. Uh, with pick 44 and then obviously two in the third round tonight, where do you see Buffalo going or prioritizing? Yeah, uh, I think linebacker is a huge one because they do not have a starting caliber weak side linebacker on the team. And even if you want to go further than that, I don't know that they have a linebacker that fits Sean McDermott's scheme on this roster right now, which is why at 27, I, you know, I, I did a Facebook live show last night breaking down the whole first round and, um, you know, the Reuben Foster, uh, yeah. the Reuben Foster thing was so compelling because do they want to go with him and, 
and take the risk there about the shoulder, the shoulder injury. Uh, but they already went through that last year with Shaq Lawson have to, having to sit out the first, you know, couple of months of the season um, because he needed a second surgery. So that, that was that was a compelling choice. But I think linebacker is certainly going to be something that we see them address at some point today. Um, offensive tackle, right tackle, to me is is a huge need, and to them too, because you look at what they did in free agency or what they tried to do anyway. Uh, they went after. Ricky Wagner, who ended up signing with the Detroit Lions for nine mil a year, they went after him pretty hard, and they were a finalist in those sweepstakes. So, um, if maybe if Cam Robinson from Alabama drops down to forty four, maybe that's a uh, that's a guy they they think about taking. Um, Antonio Garcia from Troy, who is more athletic, probably would be better suited to play in the zone blocking scheme that that they're trying to bring to Buffalo. Um, I think I think that's an option there, and then. Uh, you look at wide receiver too. I mean, I think that might be a position they could probably wait on uh, because there might be more value in that third round range. But I think that's uh, those three spots. If, if I had to pick any on this roster, I think those three spots would be the ones I would probably say, all right, that, as th- those have as good a, a bet as any to be drafted by the Buffalo Bills uh, with their three picks on day two. Joe Buscaglia with us, sideline reporter, Buffalo Bills, uh, WKBW. Joe, with, with the way you look at this roster, the pick they made last night, what they might do uh, coming up this weekend and today, uh, do you like what you see here with Buffalo? New coach, another new coach. How close are they to being really good? And and I hate to even start this Don't now. Don't go there. I Don't know, do it. But can they can no. they make can they make a uh, <laughs> can they make a, a a big dent somewhere next season with this Buffalo? How closer are they? I think that they think they're close. If if that's if that's uh, how we want to go about this, because right now it's it's a to be determined with a new head coach, a brand new offensive scheme, a brand new defensive scheme, and how these guys translate. Because they do have a lot of holes and they have a lot of questions, and and whether or not uh, you know all of the pieces that they had coming in are going to fit this puzzle perfectly. But I believe that they think they can make a push towards the playoffs this year, and. I, I think Sean McDermott wants to build up this defense in the way that uh, that he sees fit, and by doing that, he has to add players that uh, that fit his scheme. And so that's why today is going to be huge. Getting Tre'Davious White was a big one um, last night. Uh, you know, I think if they stayed at ten, uh, I think one guy that uh, that they probably would have thought long and hard about adding would have been Hassan Reddick, the linebacker out of Temple. So that that's why I, I keep thinking they. Uh, they're going to try this whole uh, try to address the linebacker position, and they need to because that is a, a humongous weakness. And linebackers are so important in Sean McDermott's scheme. But uh, but what they've done so far, I like Sean McDermott and what I've known of him so far. I will say it feels a bit different over at One Bills Drive right now. Um, and you know, I've been covering the team. Is pretty much since the uh, the middle of the 2009 season, every day, and you know, for all the coaching changes that we've seen, Chan Gailey or Dick Duran really back then in, in 2009, Chan Gailey in 2010 for 2012, Doug Marone for two years in 2013 and 2014, then Rex Ryan the past two years. I mean, it was a coaching change, but it never really felt different over there. With Sean McDermott, you know. There's a lot of turnover, even inside the building, not not the coaching staff or anything like that. There's been a lot of turnover even so far. It just has a different feel to it. He, he values hard work, everything like that. Is it going to translate on the field? I'm going to give you a big old we'll see because, uh, you know, he, he's literally only coached like three practices so far. So uh, we'll see. Joe Biscaglia, uh our uh, beat reporter, sideline reporter, covering with the uh, Buffalo Bills, joining us here this morning on Big Board Sports. Hey, Joe, how much of that culture change has to do with with ownership? I know it sounds like there's an obvious answer attached to it, but but really, how much of it has to do with the Pagula family? Yeah, I think they learned from a mistake, and that's, I mean, just it's human nature. I mean, you go into anything doing doing stuff for the first time, and uh, uh, and you know the the first year or so that, that you're on the job, you make some mistakes or you do some things like, ah, I really didn't do that correctly. I, I'm, I'm going to change that next time around when, when I get the chance. O- only multiply that by about a million <laughs> and it being in the, in the public eye. That's kind of what's happened with, with the Pagoulas. You know, 
I don't think that they necessarily knew that being owners of an NFL team would be as tough as it is, you know, just from a pressure standpoint and, you know, trying to build up a team that can win. Uh, and, you know, if, if you trust the wrong people, uh, sometimes it, it can come back to bite you. So I think what they ended up doing is they took uh, a front a front seat, a front row seat on the hiring process of Sean McDermott. And I don't know if that was necessarily the case last time around with uh, the hiring of Rex Ryan. I think they learned from that. They they establish what they value in the uh, in the head coach or someone in a position of prominence, and that's why they went with McDermott. So I think that's why we're starting to see more and more things. They're they're listening to people that that kind of uh, uh, know the the NFL game, and and they're making more educated decisions than they were. So it, you know it's a, it's an evolution process. We're all going through evolution uh, every single day, and and the Pagulas are no different with owning the the Buffalo Bills. Well, let's hope they find some stability with the the new head coach, the next one in Sean McDermott, and we'll see what that translates into uh, wins and losses on the field. Joe, thanks for a few minutes here on a a busy Friday show. We appreciate it. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me.